Well, good morning and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to look at a beautiful psalm, one that uh, has a special message. As we look at Psalm 101 today, let me ask you a question first. Do you ever make promises to the Lord? Oh, Lord, if you'll just do this for me or that for me, then I will. Or do you say, oh, Lord, I remember when you maybe first got saved first came to know the Lord and you said, Lord, I'm going to be this kind of person for you. And I promise to do this or to do that. That's very much like Psalm 101. We we would entitle this the King's promise to the Lord, the King's promise to the Lord. And as a king, uh, in this case, King David, this is a Psalm of David. As a king says, Lord, I want to be the leader that you want me to be the best leader possible. And this is what I promise. Let's look at it together. It says, I will sing of your love and justice. To you, O Lord, I will sing praise. I will be careful to lead a blameless life. When will you come to me? I will walk in my house with a blameless heart. I will set before my eyes no vile thing. Now notice three times in this psalm, you'll see the word eyes, eyes referred to. Why does he say, I will set no vile thing before my eyes, no evil, wicked thing, depending on your translation, uh, before my eyes? Because the eyes are a very important organ in the body, and what goes into it really affects everything else. We react based on some of the things we see. It fires up things in our brain that we may not have even thought about. The eyes are quite important. We'll talk about that a little bit at, at the end. Uh The second part of verse 3 says, The deeds of faithless men I hate. They will not cling to me. Men of perverse heart shall be far from me. I will have nothing to do with evil. Isn't this a beautiful promise for a leader of a country to make? Verse 5, Whoever slanders his neighbor in secret, him will I put to silence. And whoever has haughty eyes and a proud heart, him will I not endure. My eyes will be on the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me, in whose walk is blame he whose walk is blameless will minister to me. So notice the contrast. Won't let anything evil before my eyes. So what am I going to do with my eyes? I am going to keep my eyes on the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. Now, verse 7, no one who practices deceit will dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. And every morning I will put to silence all the wicked in the land. I will cut off every evildoer from the city of the Lord. Well, what a beautiful psalm and a beautiful commitment of a king. Now, we know that David may have made some uh, early in his ministry commitments very much like this to be the man after God's own heart that he knew he was supposed to be. But, you know, we don't always keep those commitments, do we? We often fail. You know, that's why some folks say, well, I'm not going to make any promises to God because I know I will break them. I think that's the wrong attitude. I think the idea is we should, for ourselves and our own integrity, set the bar high. And we should say, hey, this is what I want to be if God so allows and if I can be strong enough filled with the Holy Spirit to make it through, here's where I want to go and set that bar high. Now, we know we may miss that mark, but for that, the Bible has 1 John 1, 9, because if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But don't fall into the trap of just setting mediocrity as your goal, because then, my friends, you'll hit it every time. But you know, when we look at this, the verse that really stood out to me in this psalm, of course, is verse three, when David said, I will set before my eyes no vile thing. He's saying it's very important that I do not look on evil to enjoy it. You know, I think it was Spurgeon who said sin like pitch is very apt to stick. Well, now in this generation, they don't really understand what pitch means. That's what you do when you're playing baseball but they don't understand that it's a sticky tar-like substance. So what are we getting at? It's the enjoyment of sin vicariously. When you say, hey, there's something I know I can't do, the word of God forbids it, but I sure can't enjoy watching others do it. You know, that's the trap. And it's the kind of trap that allows us when we begin to put things in front of our eyes. And today in this media-driven world with so many ways 
for things to flood into your heart and into your soul through your eyes that are wicked. We have to be careful because you can immediately begin to soften up on sin. You can, you can begin to laugh at sin. You, you can begin to take things not as seriously as the Word of God takes them. And before long, you may be surprised to discover that that sin has crept into your life as well. Why is it the eyes? Why are the eyes so important? Ask any advertiser. For example, I especially love the drug companies who are out there trying to get you to go to your doctor and ask for their brand new magic pill. You know, what they love to do on the commercials, I mean, there are certain things they have to do legally, the legal requirements, the disclaimers, but what are you going to put in the commercials? What's the beautiful shots of the smiling people enjoying life, smiling, laughing with friends as if everything is great because I have taken this medication, all the while giving those endless disclaimers. And remember, here's the power. The eyes see all the pleasant, smiling, wonderful people enjoying life while they're saying, now this drug might just make you nervous, anxious, paranoid, suicidal, wreck your digestive system, your nervous system, your skeletal system, uh, your, your destroy your sex life, could possibly give you a heart attack, stroke, cancer, and cooties. And, uh, and by the way, I love this one. Fatal events have occurred. But don't worry, take this drug. It's going to make you look just like these people that are enjoying life. What overcomes the information that goes through the ears? What we see with our eyes. So the eyes are powerful. So friends, take the advice of David today and say, hey, I'm going to guard my eyes and be careful what I look at. And especially the things I look at to take into my life and enjoy that might be evil and wicked, lest I suddenly become immune to the pain of sin. Well, thank you for joining me this morning. We'll do this again tomorrow right here on Wake Up in the Word as we march through the Psalms and pick up beautiful examples of how God can lead us day in and day out. God bless you. We'll see you next time right here on Wake Up in the Word.